Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. So, a couple days ago, I put out a video showing you how to build a radar guided tracking system. And, uh, well, immediately after that, basically, new radars came out. So, <laughs> I've been kind of screwed there, but uh, I figured for today's video, we'll be going over these new radars. They're pretty similar, but there's also a lot more things you can do. Arguably, they are pretty easy. So, Let's get right into it. So here are the new radars. We have five in total. One is pretty similar to the old one. And we've also got the radar dish continued and also the large AWACS radar continued here. The one by one radar is kind of bugged out right now. Um, but yeah, this one is really cool actually because this, as you can well see, is one block. So these are really designed for missiles, as it says there. I suppose if they fix this, the radar would actually be spinning in the Z direction. So you could stick this on the front of a missile and have an entire radar guided missile just in one block, which I think is really cool. We've also got the phalanx radar here, and you actually see this over here on my CWIS thing that I just made um, very quickly. I had this set up with my radar tracking and uh, didn't take that long to actually implement it in and swap things around but uh, yeah so I'm tracking the helicopter over there you'll see it's very like jittery that's just because there's noise now in the radars uh, I think it's for balance maybe if we're on multiplayer and when we have weapons we don't want radars that are just gonna snap on to your plane and it's not gonna be very fun I don't think so I think that's why there's noise and it's more true to life but uh, yeah still very cool so as you can see I have them all spinning and this is without any velocity pivots whatsoever they have their own customized settings which will be going over later and they allow you to set a either sweeping motion or a clockwise slash anti-clockwise motion like this and uh, yeah it's pretty cool how you can just turn these without any other kind of mechanics going on, which is pretty good. So now that we're in the workbench, let's take a look at some of the logic and the settings that you can do for these radars. So we'll go into the select tool and we'll just start with the regular radar here. Now we've got a few settings in here. We've got the FOVs for both horizontal and vertical, something that wasn't in the old radars. We only had kind of vertical and elevation angle in the old ones so now we don't have to use more than one of these which is great and if we actually change these you'll see down below the effective range is actually going to change here now the base effective range will change depending on what kind of radar you're using so the phalanx one will have a larger base range the radar will have an even greater one and the AWACS radar will have a whopping 50 kilometers initially but if you're using the full range you're not going to be able to have that much fov because as you can see if we increase these the range goes down so if we have full 90 fov we're not going to have pretty much any range but yeah people have been saying that this is a bit kind of severe so you're barely going to be getting any range out of the basic radar and even less for the missile one but yeah Next we've got the sweep settings and this is relating to the rotation that you saw a minute ago. This is going to be where you can select which type of rotation that you want. You could have it not rotating at all. You could have it clockwise, anti-clockwise or in sweep mode. Sweep mode will be going within 180 degrees and just going back and forth. Sweep speed is pretty self-explanatory. Um, the more you turn this slider up the faster it's going to turn if you want it to go faster then this is where you would be using velocity pivots and the sweep limit is going to be only for sweep if you're using any of the other ones this one isn't going to really matter because it's just going to be going in a circle regardless this is going to be the angle in degrees that your radar can actually sweep in total if you're on full then this radar will go 90 degrees to the left and 90 degrees to the right and it will just oscillate between that so welcome back to the radar tutorial base here. I've copied the pivot setup in the old one 
and just kind of pasted it onto the new one and we're going to be using the logic to create the tracking again so I'm going to be using the phalanx radar here and I'm just going to place that on top and let's go into the logic that we have on these radars as you can see we've got two regular nodes which is a lot less than the old ones here but uh, we've got the activate this is going to be obviously just activate it before we had to set up the switch boxes inside but now we've got it all in one and we can save power a lot easier we've also got radar rotation if you have it on sweep mode or rotation then this is going to be displaying where the radar actually is which could be useful for screens and all the other outputs that are on the old radars have been compressed into composite and they've actually been added to what we can have is now up to eight targets being detected at once and each giving out their own elevation angle azimuth distance which is really cool because before we only had you know a single target and we had to kind of work with that but this is going to be really good for just detecting a lot of targets a lot of enemies and even like missiles and things so we'll go through this and we'll make a nice microcontroller to do all this so like i said before for the eight targets there are going to be eight sets of composite data that you can take out of the radar the first is going to be on off and that's going to be similar to our target found we're going to have eight of those channels one to eight on the on off channel will be um, the different targets so channel one would be target one and if that's found then channel one would be on if you found channel five then you would be detecting target five and that will give out a non-signal on that channel and the same goes for the numbers except they have four different numbers which are the distance azimuth angle elevation and time since detection which is pretty cool so one to four is going to correlate to channel one or target one and that will be target one's data and then target two would be five to eight and so on up to the limit of 32 channels which is why we have eight targets so here i have version two of the tracking radar and it is a lot smaller it has half the nodes and the logic is much more compressed and simple so we'll go into this now with the select tool everything from here is pretty much the same all i've done is converted the normal pids to advanced ones nothing has really changed here it just allows me to put property numbers and change the values because i had to recalibrate this and change them just by selecting the controller which is a lot quicker so the exact same as the other video just advanced next up we have the composite here and I'm only using one target for this so that's why I've only got two for these and these are going to be the pitch and yaw so two is our azimuth or left and right from the radar and three is the elevation or up and down from the radar and you can see these go into the process variable and go to their corresponding outputs to the pivots so pitch and yaw if I wanted to I could come in here and get an on off read and connect that on channel one this will be detecting the first target and that will tell you whether it's found it but uh, because our radar is always on and uh, we can it's got the new node to tell us whether to activate it I've just got the PIDs on so I'm not actually using this anymore unlike the other uh, controller if I wanted to detect more targets, then I would copy this down and I'll change this to maybe six, seven. I don't know the exact values. Or I could maybe add some things here. I could add the other two and put these on channel four for time since detection and channel one here for distance. And I could display those maybe on a screen or whatever I like. But uh, yeah, let's go and wire this up. So composite straight there and pitch in your. And that is literally it. And what I'll do is on the button over here, I'll just put that to the activate and the laser here. So let's go and test this out here. We've got the normal one. I've just disconnected this so it's not tracking us. But we turn the button on, it activates our radar and our laser. And uh, there we go. It's tracking us. 
we've got that little bit of wobble there that's uh that's normal that's part of the radars like i said earlier but yeah there we go so it's tracking me pretty well pretty much the same as the other one really um yeah new radars pretty cool stuff and uh well yeah 